Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. This is the More Conversation Show. Yes, more conversation, less concentration makes for a great stitch social because if you're yapping too much and not moving that hook, the only thing you're going to finish is the dessert tray. So today we have the More Conversation Show. It's a nice easy repeat pattern that you can crochet while you're talking with others. So let's take a closer look at this pattern and let's see what you're going to get yourself involved in today. This pattern requires two balls of Karen Big Cakes. Now the pattern that you see here is actually just using one ball but I'm kind of a big boy so I think it's a little small. It's 50 inches across so I think that you're going to need at least a ball and one quarter or one half of another and it's using Karen Big Cakes. So just like you see and the color that you saw in the picture here is called Afternoon Tea. We have a very easy quick to repeat pattern that will just build. It's working in multiples of two. That may be helpful to you just to be able to keep yourself in count and then once you get this done you can repeat it as many times as you want. Blow it up as big as you need and then we're gonna do one uh, border around the final edge just like you see. So without further ado let's grab some uh, big cakes. I'm going to be using uh, Karen regular cakes. I don't wanna break open a new ball just to show a mini sample here on screen. So I'll just use it with another yarn. So let's go, let's get going now. So here's the shawl right starting from the back and we're gonna be growing outward. Now these crisscrosses actually pop up from the project so it gives you a bit of texture but on the back side it looks pretty flat. So you're gonna be able to tell which is the good side and which is the wrong side with this particular one. We're gonna get yourself started and then once we get started you can go as big as you need to go and you're going to finish on a single crochet row. And on the single crochet row then you're going to apply the uh, pico edging just like you see really quick and easy and I was able to do this while chatting with others without a problem. So let's stop the chitter chatter and let's get at it and we're going to chain three today. This is an easy level project if you're curious on the level and you're going to put it onto your hook. I need you to chain three. So one, two, three and insert the hook into the very first chain yarning over pulling through and through and then you will have the center ring of the back of the shawl. So let's now move on to row number one. So row number one we're going to start and we're going to chain three. So one, two, three. This counts as a double crochet here and throughout whenever you do a chain three like that. So we're now going to go into the center of the ring and we're gonna do three double crochets right into the center of that ring and let's count those out together. So we have one, two, and three. So the chaining three plus these three gives you a count of four. Remember I said it's always in multiples of two so there is two and two. Now we're going to just turn the corner. So to turn the corner we are going to chain two and then come back into the center of the ring and put in four double crochets so it matches this side. So this is the very point of your shawl. So you're just gonna come in and you're going to double crochet four times. So one, two, three, and four. And then that's it. So this is the point you kinda don't see it yet but it will be there and you're going to turn and then begin row number two. This is a single crochet row. So the very first stitch normally what we would do is that we would expand so that it continues to state a triangle but in the single crochet round we're not gonna add any extra stitches to the, the front or the other side. So the beginning and the end. So we're just going to chain one and single crochet in each of the stitches going across to the corners. So I'm not gonna count them but it's gonna stay in even numbers of twos. In the corner you're going to apply four single crochets. So one, two, three and four. Notice that there's no gapping spaces. You're going to immediately start in the very first one and then work your way to the edge. And so they're just gonna single crochet yourself all the way to the other side. So you're not adding on any extra stitches at the end. Remember that the turning chain is also a stitch. So just go right into the turning chain. Do not go into a gapping space. Go right to the chain itself and single crochet. And that was row number two. Turn your work and let's start the repeat pattern from this point forward from three to six is the repeat for the remaining of this blanket or of this shawl, sorry. So let's start the repeat. We're going to start when we're going to chain three. Counts as a double crochet and in the very same one you're going to apply another double crochet. So the beginning and the ending of this row whenever you're doing it is always gonna have two stitches into the first. Okay? So now you're just going to do one double crochet in each of the stitches up until we get to the middle two single crochets that are in 
the corner and it's kind of easy to tell. So you can see that there's four stitches here in the, in the, um, the space here. So what we need to do is that we need to concentrate and get ourselves to the second one in. So we're gonna double crochet this one but the second one in you want to apply two double crochets into the second one. So one and two and now you're gonna put a gapping space back in so chain two and then come to the very next one and just right in line and put in two double crochets into that one. So one and two and then that's it. So you're just gonna double crochet yourself back to the other side. So I'm continuing and I'm just double crocheting until I get to the very last one. So this goes into the last single crochet. Make sure that there's two uh, double crochets in that last single crochet that you started with. Just like that. So everything should be in groups of two. So two, four, six and eight and that will help you keep it in count if you need to. So let's move on to row number four. So let's continue. We're gonna chain up three. So one, two, three. Now we're going to do a crisscross and we need to start with an expansion. So how you do that is that you come and double crochet in the very next one after that. Just like that and now lean it forward and you're gonna go into the one where this chain three is in. So just lean it forward and access it from behind and just double crochet and that will cause a crisscross. So that one that you just did plus the chain three gives you your two increase that you need in order to keep this thing being a triangle. So to continue you're just gonna crisscross all the way to the corner. So skip the next one and double crochet in the next one after that and then come back and get the one that you skipped. Just lean it forward and access it from behind and double crochet. So skip the next one, double crochet in the next one after that access it from behind to get the other one that you skipped and you're gonna do that all the way to the corner. So if your counts are right your crisscrossing will take you immediately to the corner. So I have no more stitches left and I have a corner. So in the corners you're going to maintain what you know. So it's two double crochet. So that keeps you in sets of two and then chain two and two double crochet. So you're immediately going to start and crisscross yourself back to the other side and it's that last one we need to watch for the most. So skip the next one, go to the second over and start crisscrossing. Come back and get the one you skipped. And keep doing that all the way to the other side. So this will create the texture to be on the other side of the work when you crisscross like this just so that you're paying attention. So you technically have two stitches left at this moment when I just settle down here for a second. So I have two stitches left but remember we have an expansion. So go to the last stitch and then go to the one you skipped and there is your crisscross but what we need to do is that we need to apply one more double crochet in this first one that you went into and that allows it to have the expansion just like that. So now we're going to turn your work and we're going to go to row number five. Row number five is exactly this double crochet that you see. So you're just gonna chain up three. You're going to double crochet in the first one where that chain three comes out of. So there's your expansion and now you're going to put one double crochet in each one of the stitches going across. And when you have it turned like this you'll see that this is where the uh, texture will appear. So we're technically looking at the good side of the project called the right side of the project. So you're just gonna double crochet yourself all the way to the corner. So what are you gonna do in the corner? You're going to two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. And I'll stay silent for a moment. So here's the corner. So go right into the corner space, two double crochet, chain two and two double crochet and then begin double crocheting all the way back to the other side. One into each. When you come to the other side here just watch what you have. So this one's part of the crisscross 
and then the very final turning chain there's two double crochets in that one. So that was row number five. So this is the final repeat then we're going to start and we're going to go back to doing a single crochet like we did way back in the beginning here. So you're just gonna chain up one, put one single crochet in each of the stitches up until you get to the corner. So there's no expansion happening at the beginning or end of a row. Not for the single crochets. So what are you gonna do when you get to the corner? You're going to apply four single crochets with no gapping space. Okay, so the corners are four. So one, two, three, and four. And then simply just single crochet yourself all the way back to the other side. So this is the uh, end of the repeat. So what you can do if you wanna follow exactly what I did is that you repeat rows now um, three through six nine more times. So you end up with ten of these um, sections. You will notice that the yarn will change color on its own and uh, will provide really unique looking striping as it gets bigger. So you're just gonna do that. So what's gonna happen at the very end? So after, at the very end, you're going to end up finishing on a single crochet row like this. So turn your work and let's just review on how to do the final edge. To do the final edge, it's all using each one of these single crochets. I love this stitch, it's my go-to. Chain up one and single crochet in the first one. And now we're going to apply a peacoat. So this is gonna take that flat edge and make it a little more interesting. So chain three. Now we're going to do a pico. So do you see these two strands of string right there? Or of yarn. Just sink in behind them. Yarning over, pull through and through. And now single crochet into the next one. So each one of these stitches works up in sets of two. So single crochet in the next. Then apply your pico. So chain three and slip in behind those two strands on the top pull through and through and single crochet in the next. So there's another set. So you just slide in, single crochet, chain three, pico it and single crochet. So what you're going to do is that you're going to continue to do that. Just follow it around. There's nothing extra to do in the corners. Just the, it's all in sets of two and you're gonna work your way all the way back to the other side and then this is the, this is done. So you'll notice that I planned it so that this pico edge ends up on the good side. So this is the texture side that you see. So it actually looks really amazing once it's completely done. So this would be how to do the more conversation shaw so you can concentrate less and get something done while you're with others and maybe while you're out and about it's a project that you can do pretty quickly without a lot of fuss. So until next time, it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as our friends over at Inspirations.com. We'll see ya. Bye bye.